If you've played Minecraft, you'd know the Nether can be a terrifying place. There is just so much that can kill you, from magma cubes to brutes, wither skeletons, and everything in between. Oh, and the fact that it's a fiery death trap. Oh. You name it, it's dangerous. Well, maybe not these guys, they seem pretty harmless. But anyway. What if you could turn the Nether from a place like this to a place like this, completely spawn-proof and safe? This is how I transformed the Nether in my 10,000 day hardcore world from a dark and scary wasteland into a beautiful and vibrant ocean themed oasis. And I call it the Nether Ending Oasis. This project was an absolute grind that took me over one and a half years to complete, so I'd super appreciate it if you could like and subscribe. Now, here's how I did it. I've had my hardcore world for three years now, and one of my goals in this world is to build every automatic farm in the game. It sounds crazy, but just bear with me. At around 6,000 days in this hardcore world, I realized I needed to start playing safer, and something I knew that would help with this was beacons. Because beacons can give you extra effects such as regeneration and resistance, so I thought, why not put these beacons everywhere as a chance to further help my odds of survival? But there's a catch, they are not cheap. For every beacon, you need three wither skulls, and then you have to fight a wither. Getting wither skulls manually is super tedious, so I had a better idea. I needed to build a wither skeleton farm. But this wasn't going to be just any wither skeleton farm. Because if you know me, you'll know that I love doing huge builds and transformation projects. So when I set out to make this farm, I knew that it had to be grand. So I started brainstorming. I hated being in the nether because, well, I've had a few too many close calls here. Oh, stop hitting me. <gasps> Where I got to low health numerous amounts of times. Oh, that just hit me. One heart, one heart, one heart. Oh my God. So my first goal was to make it safe meaning the whole thing had to be rid of lava and completely spawn-proof. I figured if I hated the nether that much, what would make me love it? What would make it a place where I'd want to be? Light bulb moment. On a tropical island, totally carefree, and that's how I came up with my theme. Which leads me to my second goal of transforming the nether enough to make you completely forget where you are. And most importantly, the build had to be practical, as this was a wither skeleton farm after all. So my third goal, to fit as many farms inside as I can. Now that I had my goals in place, we were ready to begin. The first thing I did was get started on a nether highway, as a safe way to get in and out not only to this project, but to the ocean monument as well. I wanted the materials that I used for this highway to act as a hint as to what was on the other side of the portal, so prismarine just made sense. After I had roughly laid out my nether highway and created a small safe area, the digging could commence. I didn't want to use any type of TNT duping or machine to clear this place out, so I got to actually mine it all by hand, which led to some awesome milestones. We mined 1 million netherrack, and then 2 million, and we finished the dig at over 3 million blocks. Although I did try to use a bed at one point, but uh, that didn't go so well. I feel like it'd be a lot faster just to like... To mine this out, I was using diamond enchanted pickaxes with efficiency 3 and silk touch that I would buy from my toolsmith villagers for one emerald each. Because they were so inexpensive, I could buy a bunch of them and break them without any issues. That way I didn't have to worry about losing a ton of durability on my netherite pickaxes. I'm terrible at staying focused on one thing at a time. I also didn't want to lose my mind over how much digging I needed to do, so I didn't get the whole thing dug out at once. As you can see, I started building some test pieces inside to get a feel for exactly what I was going to build here. Because here's the catch, I didn't plan any of this beforehand. I mostly just decided on things as I went. I mean, I did have some basic ideas, but funny enough, those didn't end up happening anyway. I wanted everything at first to be blue, really hitting hard on the custom biome theme. So I started placing a foundation of warped warp block and laying out some of where my ocean was going to go. I tried some little random lighting design, but also soon realized that spawn proofing this material was going to be impossible. So scratch that, I needed to find another way to design the land. I left the remains here for a while as I continued digging. I thought maybe it would give me some inspiration. Just kidding, I couldn't be bothered to remove it. I continued grinding away until I had a large open area to start prototyping what the ocean would look like, because we can't have real water in the nether, so I would have to think outside of the box. 
Similar to my slime farm, I had an idea to do a foggy glass effect, but this time I would use light blue glass to act as water. I knew I would be placing thousands of light sources for the bottom layer, so I needed to find one that was lag free. The easiest option would be torches, but torches give off particle effects which in the long run would be so laggy. So at the time, I used one of the only lag free light blocks, a jack-o-lantern. And my goodness, did that take a long time. I sheared so many pumpkins and also had to craft a bunch of torches to combine with the pumpkins to make the jack-o-lanterns. So again, to keep my sanity, I had to do little by little. Once I knew roughly where I was going to build the skeleton farm, I started thinking of how I wanted to decorate the farm. First, I thought of a castle, but that idea didn't last long. So I started Googling castles with boats and I came across this image. And because I knew I wanted this whole thing to be completely surrounded by water, this reference image was just so fitting. It was quite a unique design and I was excited to get started. This was the biggest building that I was ever going to create, so I knew it would probably be a learning curve. And that's how the idea of the Nether Resort came to be. I started placing down the platform that the building would sit upon. I didn't have a set size yet, but I tried to center it around the Wither Skeleton farm, which also uh, wasn't totally built yet. Using a palette of clean quartz blocks for the walls and prismarine for the detailing to go with the blue theme, it started shaping up. Time to move on to something else. I made a small storage area inside of the nether fortress with no organization at all, but used this as a place to dump my materials from digging as well as keep some things that I'd be needing for the build. I also began adding some of the ground and laying out where the water would go. It's fine, this is like gonna be a little river. It's gonna bring us down the river into another like little inlet. It's gonna be over here. I wanted one main area with a few rivers that ran around the sides like a moat to connect them. Whilst I got on with that, next I needed to start working on the Wither Skeleton Farm. To stop Wither Skeletons potentially spawning in the fortress and attacking me at any chance they got, I added a bunch of pressure plates for spawn proofing in the hopes that they would only spawn in the dedicated farm area. This did help a little, but the fortress was huge. Oh, I actually got up. Oh my god, hello friend. That was scary. We should probably do something about that. So I was still running into some trouble. I wanted to continue building so that anyone who came across the streams got more of an idea about the theming of this place from a first glance. I filled in more of the water using five layers of light blue glass on top of the jack-o-lantern and light blue carpet. The sides were made of light blue concrete powder to make it look a little more believable. To really sink in the idea that this was water, I built a small yacht that would also hold some more storage for the time being. So I had made a pretty good start on most of the basic landscaping and the water area was expanding. I wanted to make sure the water had some sort of a source that was creating the giant ocean. So I built a waterfall. It's not exactly Niagara Falls, but I think it adds a little extra dimension and again it was cool to push myself using only spawn proof blocks. I decorated the inside of this area to look like a little lush cave and I was loving that it was starting to feel less like the nether. Another feature that needed to be figured out to make the nether oasis more immersive was the sky. I decided to do the whole thing in light blue concrete as a base and again, this is something that was going to take forever to grind out. I created a concrete maker over my creeper farm in the overworld where I was able to turn concrete powder into concrete quite easily. This does terrify me having to take my totem out of my hand though, but it's pretty safe up here so I think it's worth it. I also added some glass as sort of a transparent cloud to give it a little more detail, but knew a bit more would have to be done to the sky to give it depth. To work on making progress on our third goal, it was time to build a farm. Because nether fortresses usually contain a couple of blaze spawners, I thought transforming one of these could be super cool. I found one in a decent position that would soon become the lighthouse. I was really nervous about trying to build this due to the potential danger factor of getting trapped inside with all of the lava and blazes, but it ended up working out and the blaze farm surprisingly worked well. All of my three goals were now underway and I was getting a pretty good vision about how I wanted this overall area to look. I was excited to push forward as just the small areas I had started blocking in were already giving me so much inspiration. I began to build upon the resort, adding more of a structure and also working on the side areas to emulate our inspiration image. The front yard of the resort was still pretty empty, so I thought I could texture the grass as well as build a mini wooden dock and nature area. Whilst doing this, I had also started laying out and working on building mountains that I thought could surround almost the entire project. That way I could merge the sky down and give it a dimensional background. The whole cloud is covered with the blue now behind it. Kinda looked like it's like the sky 
I hope so. In front of the dock, I built a small boat that also contained a first pet parrot and a villager to drive it, of course. Uh-oh. Wait. Oh, it's on me. I was like, dude, is that parrot actually going to fall straight into the fire right now? Like, that would be so bad. Most of the time, he actually stays standing on the ship, which does help the illusion. I then faced a slight dilemma. Above this grassy area was the nether highway, and on top here was the dome. The original dome was uneven and it was bothering my audience, so they convinced me to rebuild it. I attempted to do math correctly this time, and after that was complete, I could shift focus back to the mountains as I added some color and texture. Spawn proofing again was very, very annoying. Every single block had to have some sort of spawn proof element. I pretty much added everything I could think of, such as pressure plates, trapdoors, buttons, slabs, walls, stairs, even fences, and which although this took so long to actually build, it did help add a lot of detail. At this point, I had put almost 400 hours into this project, and it was not even halfway done. Stay tuned to the end so you can find out exactly how many hours the finished product took. So now I'm curious, what's the most hours you've ever put into a Minecraft project? Let me know in the comments. The main resort building stayed empty for a while, so I started adding slabs to spawn proof, but I noticed I was constantly running out of smooth quartz. So in one of the front rooms, I built a smelting area where I could throw all the quartz I mined and have it smelt into smooth quartz. I was getting a lot of coal from killing with a skeleton, so coal blocks made an easy fuel source to run the smelter. As you can see, I was jumping around a lot, which not only kept things interesting and fresh, but in doing this, helped avoid burnout. Whenever I was getting sick of one thing, I moved on, and it was a really nice process that worked for me. I then started expanding the back of the nether resort, making the building a reflection of the front, and the backyard was more of a larger entrance. That way, regardless of what side you viewed it on, it still looked grand. I also felt I was at a good enough point with my water placement that I could bring in some wildlife. Turtles actually don't need water to breathe, just air, so I bred a bunch at my guardian farm and really easily brought them into the project. One important thing that I wanted to do throughout this project was reward my viewers who stuck around for hundreds of hours watching me build this thing. So I came up with the idea to build over the water bungalows, similar to those you'd find on a real tropical island, and I made them available for viewers to rent. I started, I started laying out um, where my bungalows are gonna go. This helped add a little bit of lore to the project and I did build quite a few of these so it took a while and you'll see them come together as we carry on. As I was working on so many different elements for this project, my storage situation got quickly overrun. I definitely needed to create a more permanent solution, so I started building a full auto sorter for all of my nether themed blocks. How many skulls I'm getting? Holy cow. Beacons for days. Every nether brick variant, all of the quartz variants, and all the other random things you'd find in the nether now had a home. This was integral in helping me stay organized and knowing where things were moving forward. I also auto sorted the drops from the wither skeleton farm, I had the swords burned, and everything else had a dedicated spot. This is actually one of my favorite storage spots in my entire world. It's just so simple, but so clean. So much more of the sky was getting done, as tedious as the process was. And now that I knew where most of the boundaries were, I worked on the mountains and bringing the sky down. I came up with a cloud design using a bunch of white and light gray blocks, which added more light and shading to the sky, and it also helped break up some of the solid blue background. I continued working back and forth on a series of the mountains, sky, water, land formations, and the nether resort, and it was actually looking really cool seeing the contrast between what was left off the nether and what I had created. And although only a 256 by 256 area was needed to be spawn proofed around the wither skeleton farm, I wanted to expand it in some places to make it feel larger and more unique. To add a little more detail to the sky, I decided to add a sun to the back wall, sort of nestled in behind some of the mountains. It was a little hard to figure out what blocks I wanted to use, but I went with mostly yellows and some frog lights to make it shine. I was pretty happy with it until someone said it resembled a hard boiled egg, and now I can never unsee it. Well, there goes that. I'm like, I've accepted it, <laughs> I've accepted it, but I'm like not ready to change it yet. The progress was now looking awesome and the texturing of the mountains was going well, meaning our goal to spawn proof every block was making a serious dent. With most of the water down and land slabbed over, less and less mobs were able to spawn. Now that I had been on this project for 700 hours, 
Remember that warped warp block idea I had at the very start of this project? I decided to finally get rid of it, literally 700 hours later. This is very sad taking this all away because this is the first thing I ever built. Why am I like this? After blocking in the land, I had this huge open space. I planned to add a building of some sort, so I tossed up a few ideas. I thought a nice outdoor restaurant and tiki bar could be a great addition for all the resort residents to enjoy. I had a quick gaze over some Lego inspiration and found this which I thought would fit really well. Building it out of wood was probably a mistake, and yes, I learned that the hard way. But after fixing it up a few times, I was loving how it turned out. Just to reiterate exactly what this building was, I wanted to make some banners with letters on it to spell it out. I had never actually made custom banners before and they quickly became one of my favorite ways to add detail. I was finally on to the last wall of the project. The mountain in the basalt delta took up a lot of space, so I didn't have much to do here. I wanted some sort of indication that it was still the nether, as well as have an easy way out if I ever needed it. I definitely did not want the opening to be huge, and I also needed a way for the blue sky to not look awkward. So I decided to connect a rainbow, which created a nice dynamic shape and opening. Although ghasts could still wander in, I actually didn't run into that issue too much. And any ghasts that did make their way into the project, I took care of those. And by took care of those, I meant caught them and trapped them here for all eternity. Look, after all the damage they caused here, they had it coming. Behind the tiki bar, I still had a lot of room and I wanted to make more progress on our farm building task. Bees work consistently in the nether, so I thought it would be an awesome idea to get started on our third farm, a honeycomb farm. This farm worked a little too well, and I really quickly had to adjust the storage. I made the outside of the building look like a surf shack, as there's so much ocean space in here for water activities. Speaking of lots of water, the turtles were being annoying and kept grouping up in one space, so I wanted another mob that could roam freely around. And this is where I introduced some guardians, who also surprisingly don't need water to breathe. These guys were super energetic and brought so much life and animation to the space. Who would have thought guardians could thrive in the nether? Up on the hill, the basalt delta I mentioned earlier had this giant mountain and only magmas could spawn in this biome, so that called for another farm. A frog light farm. The frogs eat up the magma cubes and in return give me a ton of frog lights. Frog lights are actually another source that is lag free, so I tend to use these everywhere in my hardcore world. The mountain space sort of reminded me of Greece with all those villas hanging over the edge, so that was my inspiration to decorate this farm. I felt like it also kept the modern theme and matched with the nether resort. Now, you're probably wondering if I was planning on building one of the most popular nether farms, a gold farm. I do actually have a separate perimeter plan to do a giant one because I don't use the nether roof, but I did want to add a mini one in here just to give me a couple of materials here and there. I built a piglin rain cloud high in the sky where piglins would gold fall down and into this hot air balloon working. and I could collect gold That's nuggets amazing. and rotten flesh. It gives me like three gold nuggets an hour, but hey, at least I have one. I did love how the design of the hot air balloon looked on the ground, but I wanted to build a few in the sky to add another pop of color. Getting the villager up into this one was difficult, but it did add a cool easter egg. After placing 140,000 pieces of blue concrete, the sky finally got finished. Three, two, one. There it is. We have officially, officially this time completed the sky like for the third time but it's actually done now obviously there was still a lot of stuff in here that was incomplete so i made sure some of those things that i started early on in this project got finalized one being the interior of the lighthouse this stayed empty for way too long so i wanted to pretend that this was the lighthouse keeper's room i added a bed some decor and a nice spawn proof staircase to get all the way up to the blaze farm not only was the lighthouse empty for ages, but some wings in the nether resort as well. Because I loved the way that the outdoor bar turned out, I added an indoor bar and a check-in area. And then on the opposite side, I built two terrariums, one with baby magmas and the other with the spare frogs left over from the frog light farm. Some more of the exterior detailing got done and I eventually built a marketplace with different themed stalls to fill the space behind the tiki bar. Although there was still a few things left to complete, I was pushing closer to hitting 10,000 days in my hardcore world. I finished up what I could, and then we did it. Before 
I had spent over two years working on this project now, which was insane. I had a nice fireworks show to celebrate, but it wasn't over yet. I wanted to add one final farm to this project, and that was a piglin bartering farm. I had this cave area that I hadn't really done anything with, so I made a small opening and expanded it out. I used dark blue glass for the water this time to add a more mysterious vibe. The color was actually super pretty. I set up another waterfall and a small boat and I made it piglin pirate themed. The building only currently holds two piglins, so I hope to have more in the future. But basically, I give them gold and in return, they give me some items. I did make an auto sorter here just to make things easier. After I completed that, I actually felt satisfied with everything that I had done at this point. The project ended up turning out better than I could have ever imagined. And I also successfully completed all three of my goals. Spawn proofing? Check. Build a bunch of farms? Check. Complete transformation? Check. The Wither Skeleton farm that I initially built this whole perimeter for in the first place works so well. I killed thousands of Wither Skeletons, hundreds of Withers, and my base is filled with beacons, making it a lot safer. I was able to turn a place I once felt immense anxiety every time I stepped in, into a place where I now don't have to worry about getting killed by anything. I felt completely safe. I did all of this using no mods or texture packs, except connected textures, otherwise the water would look a little like this. And I only used blocks that were in the vanilla game, so I had to push myself to be creative and find alternate solutions to things. Because I only play on this hardcore world when I stream, I was able to easily keep track of the hours. And after over a whopping 1000 hours of stream time, I had finally finished this project, coming in at a 300 by 400 diameter space. I hope that in sharing my process, it makes you comfortable to know that there really isn't a right or wrong way to do things. I wanted to show how a mega build could be completed from a realistic point of view, especially from someone who has big dreams and goals but struggles to stay on task. Although it might take you a little longer, don't be afraid to try something new. So go out there and create some awesome things, because really, anything is possible in this game. I hope you enjoyed watching me transform the scary nether into the nether-ending oasis. Don't forget to like and subscribe to follow along with my hardcore Minecraft journey. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.